Nobody gets a shell ejecting shotgun for skirmish ability. Let's face it, you get it for the cool factor. In Hong Kong, we have CQB sites everywhere, which means close quarter fighting is common practice. With indoor games, shotguns add a flair of the dramatic. Come with me if you want to live. Here at Red Bull Bearsoft, we appreciate shell ejecting shotguns for what they are. A honking good time, and one of the most intimidating weapons for CQB. <laughs> There are shotguns out there. Many are skirmishable. These are shell ejecting. It's a pain in the ass. But you're indoors anyway, so your biggest actual problem is getting your shells mixed up with someone else's shell ejecting shotgun. And what are the chances that more than one person is crazy enough to actually have a shell ejecting shotgun in any one game? Worst case scenario, you can just engrave your shells. Get creative. Put little angry bees on them or something. Or, you know, your name. One of the charms of indoor games is the lack of AEGs using the realism of pistols to give you that interesting element with the actioning slides and the hammers and the triggers and the power coming out of the magazines and the restricting of magazines to have real cat games or not, the point is it's still fun, you have the blowback and the gas and it's a hoot Continuing that theme of realistic action, if you allow shotguns into a pistol game then they have their own rebalancing issues they're real cats, so anywhere from 5 to 7 capacity means that it has the proper capacity for a shotgun. Each individual shell supplies its own individual power, so jamming can happen per shell, failures can happen per shell, but the gun itself just keeps going, and each individual shell has anywhere from 3 to 6 pellets per shot. In fact, we go so far as to say that this thing recreates the practical real ones so much that it could actually use it for safer and far less risk handling drills for 12 gauge shotguns. The Tanaka M817 Marine Magnum, a replica of the real steel, imitating it right down to the dull nickel silver finish, just as used by the Marine Corps, only the real version, not this one, that would be silly. The capacity of this thing, 6 in the tube plus 1 in the breech, the shell holder rack comes with a gun which you can attach or leave on as you prefer. The Airsoft Surgeon Tactical Shotgun Shell Holder is available for separate purchase. It mounts on with an elastic band, so it can be attached either to the gun or onto your arm. One of the most advantageous features of using a shell ejecting shotgun is the ability to switch between different kinds of shells. And most importantly, by manually loading and interrupting the feed, you can actually add a special or change in your ammunition by simply adding in a new shell at any given moment. We start with the stock Tanaka shells. This plastic housing shell loads three pellets at a time and runs on 134 gas. This chronos at about 270 FPS, meaning those three pellets are nice and comfortable at short range. Perfect for room clearing because that way people won't complain about too high a powered weapons. To get a bit interesting when things get a little dicey, we move on to these. Brass colored mad bull shells. These load 6 pellets at a time for a higher volume spread, and can run on 134, or green, or propane, or CO2, giving you a variety of power options. Running on 134, it's about the same power as the stock Tanaka, except of course it shoots 6 at a time. On green, it clocks in at about 370 FPS, making it more powerful than your average pistol, which should give you more than enough to get most of your spread down a corridor at least as far as a pistol can. Whether it be a long range corridor, or you just happen to find yourself outdoors with a shotgun and you need that extra bit of kick, we bring you this. Known in the office as the Smag Shell, this is the Airsoft Surgeon Super Magnum. It runs on anything from 134 right up to CO2. It loads one single 6mm BB. On green gas or propane, it puts out a single pellet at 470 FPS. We start off with the stock Tanaka Shell. 134 gas, three 6mm pellets, 0.2 grams each. Here we go. Jim Bob is set about 20 feet away. A nice comfortable power for indoors and even at 20 feet, it's going to sting but not hurt terribly much at only 270 FPS. So now we're at about 25 feet away from Jim Bob. I'm not entirely sure my 3 shot low powered spread is enough to reach quite that far, at least not confidently. So we step it up. Mad Bull Shell. 6 6mm six pellets, 0.2 grams each, on green gas. Here we go. 
easy hit. These pellets came out with a lot more force, accompanied by a much louder bang and a very satisfying big white cloud of puff. So stepping it up once more, we step out of the room into a corridor and now we're faced with the challenge of an indoor game. It's indoors, I've got an indoor gun which is great and nice and low powered, but now I have to shoot to the other end of the corridor. Now that guy might have some fancy airsoft surgeon pistol with more power than my shotgun and more accuracy. So I need to take him down quick, and I'm not sure I'll be able to take him out with my six. The power is quite high on the mad ball shell, but not quite high enough for me to be confident for the takedown. So I pull out a smag shell. This one's loaded on green gas with one single 0.2 gram 6mm pellet. This should be cocking in at about 470 FPS. So now I should be able to take him down here at about 50-55 feet without much problem. Great, so now I eject the shell, and I go back to my magazine tube with standard ammunition. So now I can advance in the corridor. I don't need to swap magazines or switch to some fancy shells, because I just go back to the standard ones in the tube. So now I can advance in the corner with my nice low-powered round, so no one has to complain. Taking it one step further, something my shell ejecting shotgun could do that others can't. I've got a shotgun. I'm taking point, I have to sweep through the rooms. However, I'm in the corridor. And I know at the end of the corridor there's a couple of guys with pistols, one with a GBBR M4, and a few with grenades. So it's pretty hot. Now, I'm taking point, but I've got a shotgun. So I need to make sure my first rounds are powerful enough to get down to the end, but the last few have some nice scatter and low power, so no one complains. So, from cover, I just stacked a rainbow of rounds inside the magazine tube. I've got a Tanaka low-powered shell. I've got two Madbull mid-powered shells, and I've got one smag at the front. So at maximum range, I load the smag shell. I take my first shot. This is my longest range shot with the most powerful shell, so I have a high chance of hitting something. Great. Okay, so I fire my high-powered shot now. Because I'm advancing and now they're running for cover because they see a shotgun guy coming down the corridor. This gives me time. Now, I rack the shot. And now I've injected the smag and I've moved on to the higher power of the spread shells. Six shots on green gas. And now I've got two shots of those. Bam! Cover. Bam! Cover. And they're terrified because I'm launching showers at the downrange. And now, towards the end, of course, I don't need quite so much shower, and I'm going to start complaining about power, but that's okay, because I get, as I get closer, I've got down to the end of the rainbow with my low-powered shots. Rainbow to you. You're in an indoor game, and you propose that you want to use something a bit more interesting than the pistol's only restriction. So you suggest your shotgun. They're okay with it because it counterbalances itself. It has smaller capacity than a pistol, and it shoots a little slower than a pistol. But that's okay, because you've got tricks, obviously. So, if you're looking for something a little bit more interesting, and a little bit more applicability, compared to the fact otherwise that it's very encumbering to use indoors, we give you this. The Shell Ejecting Shotgun. The Swiss Army Gun of indoor games. I'm Mark Light. This has been Red Wolf Airsoft Special. Enjoy.